I remind myself every morning, nothing I say this day will teach me anything. So if I'm going to learn, I must do it by listening. Larry King. We're going to talk about. Let's talk about sex. Again, this no. no, let's talk about communication because everybody that I talked to that wants counseling this last week, but it has to be. It they has to say be specific. I know, but I'm I'm saying let's find something specific about communication because how about how do you get off the couch? The the men that are stuck with communicating get on the couch. They don't know how to get off. The Husbands are on the couch because they don't know what to do with their emotions, honey. How to re-engage. Yeah. So that's what you're saying. How to get off the couch. Is it just for is it just for husbands? Is that a, is that a message for them? Not necessarily, but they would probably need it more. I don't know. I ain't been on the couch in a minute, so I don't know what that feels like. I know like. that's right. You ain't going on the couch. I know how to I know how to stay off the couch. <laughs> <laughs> you do know how to stay off the couch. Uh -huh. But I've been on the couch before. Did you get what you needed? No. Playing around. Well, you got to figure out what we're going to talk about. What is the... I gave you a suggestion. So now you have to feedback. Give me some feedback on that suggestion. Could you stop rattling that paper? Because it's making too much noise. Oh, I, I wasn't thinking that you were still recording. I thought you were about to pull up. <laughs> I was, but... Okay, Nick all of this. Okay. What? So, you be so ghetto, so so pretty, but so ghetto, man. I don't understand it. <laughs> You're so Brooklyn, not ghetto, not even ghetto. I'm from, the, I'm from Brooklyn. What you want me to say? Can you polish that thing up? People I can be Brooklyn, polished. I mean, I can I get polished up. No, you, it just comes out of you. <laughs> I think it's funny. I tell you what, though, this is this is a good conversation because I think sometimes where we're from and of course the temperaments we don't want to we don't want to re-engage to that I had to I had to learn how to be stronger yep you sure did to, to fight that you can't monster can't take no punks over here well yeah water bottle for here no my water bottle from my big water bottle you didn't break oh it's right here it spilled God. you have to clean it up honey you spilled it you put it here and it spilled when you got out the truck it spilled in your seat no it didn't you moved it i moved it because it spilled When you got up, it, it it was sitting in here and it spilled in your seat, so I moved it and I put it back there. So how come my seat's not wet? Because I, okay, you know what? See, that's what you, you see, you know, you ask a whole bunch of questions. You don't believe you didn't believe me. That's what it was. Well, when I left it, it was intact, so I didn't know how. But you it don't spilled. think it spilled that you knocked it I over? I don't know how because I had it sticking down. When in you here. got out of the truck, mm -hmm. it flipped into the seat. I'm sitting here minding my business, trying to make some phone calls. You get out, you slam the door, and it flipped in your seat. Okay. It had I grabbed. Legs. It walked over. You know what the hell? Is
Why do you see your shoes? I didn't see those. Why would They're you have these? They look nice. You need to some because I'm going to make sure you have a rag. I don't know what. They were hurting my feet. All right. Okay. Here we go. Enough, enough play time. Here you go. Watch it. Watch it. See, that's what happened before. Stop looking at my butt. Your butt looked like two cantaloupes just like in the middle of the desert waiting to be... Welcome to Can We Talk, I'm Derek. And I'm Sonia, thank you for watching. Today's episode is entitled, Making Your Marriage Great, Learn to Communicate. <laughs> <laughs> so can we talk? You know, we're laughing because can Sonia we talk? comes up with these thoughts. Making your marriage great, <laughs> learn how to communicate. It's a gift that you have, so can gotta we talk? You gotta make your marriage great. You gotta learn how to communicate. So here's the thing. You say hi to my friends first? No, I don't even know why you have those little things That's up here. It's incredible in the hawk. But go ahead, I'm coming back. This is for the men. This is for the men. Mercy. Don't go anywhere. This is just for look, the men. Look, when our son comes home and he sees his little he gave me features, permission. he's going to be like, you moved them out of my positioning. He gave, I know, right? <laughs> he's going to have some issues with you. Well, we got to get it in before yeah. he gets yeah, off yeah, the yeah. bus. Yeah, okay, so, so we, we, we are, um, okay, so here's the thing. This week and last week, in almost all of our counseling sessions, the issue kept coming back to, we just don't know how to communicate. We just don't know how to communicate. We got a few new clients this week, and what they shared, we're just coming in because we just need how to learn how to communicate. So, you know, communication uh, is something that we all do, whether we talk or not. And people that are, are hearing impaired, um, and actually the deaf community does not like to be called hearing impaired. They like to be called deaf. I learned that in a deaf sensitivity training. So people that are deaf, um, are, they, people assume that they won't communicate verbally, um, even though some read lips because they're using their hands. A lot of times people assume that they're not communicating verbally, but they really are communicating verbally those that read lips mm -hmm. and then some communicate with sign language so communication covers the, the spectrum of so many different ways you've got the nonverbal, the verbal the sign language the non-sign language you've got you know just uh facial expressions body language the whole right. nine right but we've narrowed it down to three different reasons why people communicate we communicate to give information to relay something emotional or to give confirmation those are the three reasons for the average people to communicate, to give information, to convey something emotional, mm -hmm. or to give confirmation about something. So to give information, I am going to Walmart and I'm picking up three items. To share something emotional, I feel disappointed that you forgot to bring the cookies home when I texted you to bring home the cookies. Okay, we're getting personal right That's now. emotional, right? <laughs> then confirmation would be, what would you say if I asked you to get me something from the store and I texted you? I got your text. That's confirmation, right? And so, then I get another text after that. And then I get like a list of texts after that. But that's that. not still then, the point. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, we... <laughs> We are, um, we, we want to kind of hone in real briefly in this episode on effective ways to communicate, okay? So if you're communicating information, um, it's important that you focus on the facts. But if you're communicating something emotional, it's important that you focus on the feelings. And here's where a lot of people get mm -hmm. stuck. They don't know how to talk in feelings, right. especially men. So they end up telling you informational stuff when it's actually emotional stuff. And so before you know it, hubbies are on the couch mad because they don't know how to get it out. Um, the wife doesn't know how to respond because she's thinking that he's talking informational, but it's really emotional. We are equipped to deal with emotional. We're, de we're equipped to deal with e informational if we know it's right. informational. But if you all have something emotional to tell us, gentlemen, Remember, we've been on this path for a minute. 
our last two vlogs before the family edition really was about husbands and women and uh, w wives and husbands about how we feel emotionally and how we deal with that. So we're back to that because what we're finding is um, we don't do disclaimers when we're communicating. And you may need to do a disclaimer when you're communicating to your spouse. So for example, last night, Derek said a whole lot of stuff after one of our sessions and it was really good stuff, you know, because we do a lot of recaps when we finish our clients, our, our counseling sessions. And I had to give him a disclaimer. I had to say, I am about to share something emotional with you. It's not informational and it's not confirmation. It's I'm just about to vent. And that was good. That was, I wish we could have recorded that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I affirmed what Sonia said because I said a lot to her first. And she had to say that because if she didn't say what she had said to me, I would have felt like she didn't hear what I was saying. Right. I would have felt um, dismissed. Mm -hmm. And I said a lot. And I very seldom say a lot, but it was significant. And so when, when you said what you said, mm -hmm. and I told you this, when you said what you said, it just, it just validated that you heard, you heard me mm -hmm. and you understood me. And so I was able to hear what you were saying after that. Right, right. So right. that was good. Yeah, and for Derek, see, he needs confirmation. Right. Um, and I know that about him. And here's a question, wives, have you overlooked giving your husband's confirmation because you're so busy with, your, with our two verbal centers, one on the left and one on the right? Are you so busy already formulating a response that you haven't even given confirmation to right. what your husband said because if he's anything like Derek, he needs confirma confirmation to move on. And so many times, because we have two verbal centers, we gave confirmation in our heads, right? but, <laughs> but you, we didn't give it verbally. And, it, and, it's, and it's overwhelming. And I, I need to talk to the minimum, I'm talking to the wives. It's very overwhelming when you use 20,000 words within two minutes. <laughs> it's not 20,000. Whatever the number is. See, that's my just, number. Just please disregard the beeping of the oven. This is after school hours. <laughs> and our daughter just put a snack so, in the oven. So, <laughs> and it just went off. Yeah, but look, we're at home and y'all already know the, the drill. So yeah. don't even. Focus so, on so, that. so, wives, it's overwhelming when we hear a lot of words and you want us to respond. And keep in mind that men, we're. We have one verbal center, so we're trying to catch the first 15 words. Right. And the first right. 15 words are so, make them count. Right. And then pause after the 15th word to give us a chance to respond to them. Because here's the thing, y'all. We, what we will do, what we wise will do is we will give information and then all of a sudden it turns into emotional Right. Co communication. And, we're like, we're and then all of a sudden we go back to confirmation. We could do that in, 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 in a whole segment of a conversation with our husband. So we have moved from informational to emotional to confirmation. And our husbands are just like, but you were telling me something that was informative. Like I might tell, <laughs> I might give Derek some information about my mom or my dad. And then I'm going into the next segment of emotional that happened yesterday. We right. got some information about my parents. I needed to tell Derek. I did not stop in 15 minutes. I mean, in 15 words or less. And I went right to how it made me feel. So now he's like, I don't know which one to respond to, but because he's a pro, he went back to the beginning, mm -hmm. but he had to internalize the processing first. And if you're an external processor, you, we don't usually give the other person a chance to internalize. So you have to know if your spouse and yourself are either a person that internalizes first or externalizes first. The people that externalize do not have a good appreciation for the people that internalize. Right. And that means that we don't wait for it. So when I gave all of that information to Derek yesterday, I had to wait for him to process it. And sometimes, you know, you kind of get want to get in your feelings because you're just like, dang, this Negro, Negro person, oh, man. <laughs> Won't say nothing back, right? And I'm just like waiting. And I gave all this important information. And, thing, the, and I'm just looking there, like I'm sitting there, like. The funny thing about it is that I walk. I, I didn't walk explode. away. I want to explode. I want to explode. I just want to bust like open. But I didn't. I didn't walk away. It's a, this is a, a skill. She was talking a lot, and it was overwhelming. But I understood what she was saying. And I'm walking. We're in the one room, 
and I'm walking because we're closing down our session. I walk into the, another, another room, but I was acknowledging, uh huh, I hear you. Okay, I came back in. I'm still here. I got you. Came back in. And because it was so overwhelming to be in that confined space for that shorter period of time <laughs> with all the, I felt like I was in prison. You felt like you were claustrophobic. I was, I was in the elevator. That's why you got up. Got up and left. Yes, I was in the elevator and the music was playing, but the music is important. But I had to kind of find a way to shift. Oh, here we go. Sorry about that, man. And I had to find a way to shift, not to ignore what Sonya was saying, but to also remove myself in, in the space to acknowledge what she was, sh what she was saying. Mm -hmm. And to, because I'm, I'm internally processing it, which is hard for me to do. So. But see, it, you know, we're, we're talking about emotional intelligence, okay? And uh, we will give so many segments on emotional intelligence. Almost everything we cover is emotional intelligence related. So the emotional intelligence you have to have when you're married is being able to, again, go back to the four elements of intimacy, knowledge, understanding, mm -hmm. acceptance, and value. Do you know whether your husband is an internal processor or an external one. Do you understand that he is? Phlegmatic or melancholies are going to internally process. Do you accept that he is? See, and it's not easy sometimes to accept that when you want that person to respond right away. So well, that time that I'm sitting here doing like this, I'm accepting the fact that he's an internal processor and I gotta wait for it because here's the blessing. When I waited for it, the response was profound. And it's that profound experience that allows me to go to the fourth element of valuing it. So I'm like, I know, I know if I wait this out, I know if I wait it out, he's gonna give me something good. And he usually does. Yeah, because what I talk is profound. Most of the time, every not time. all the time. Every time. I mean, not say it all the time. No. But, but here's the crazy thing about it, every time. Live. <laughs> no, every time. Here's the, here's the crazy thing about it. You loved that part of that person when you were dating. Yes. That's, that's the true. It's that's the true. craziest that's true. thing. That's true. Because I used when, to just be like, oh, he's you, just so you deep. You loved it. And thinking. she was so talkative and so intelligent. I love how she talked. I can listen to her talk all day. And it drives me crazy <laughs> now. And the thing about it, you get so mad. You go into your other room. You go into your man cave. You sleep on another couch. But well, it's the same day. It's the same doggone thing. <laughs> That you love about each other. But wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but I, okay, but I will tell you this, okay? When I do decide to become withdrawn, because I do have, my third temperament is phlegmatic. I actually can internalize. They're not used to it, my yeah. kids or him. So then they yeah. hover around me like something's wrong with me. And I'm like, aren't y'all tired of hearing me talk? Don't y'all? Nope, they don't like that. Isn't that something? So you, you say yeah. that, but then there's, there comes a time where I'm quiet, and you're like, talk to me. <laughs> you yeah. ain't saying nothing. I'm not, I'm not, it's not good. <laughs> but it's okay. No, it's not okay. It's okay. It's, okay, I'm it's working okay. on it. It's okay. So did you go over the uh, other ones? Okay, other so, ones? so uh, well, we're giving those three, but the emotional intelligence requires you to know that about your spouse, whether they're an internal processor or an external processor. And when you're going to begin a heavy conversation, start with the disclaimer that this is for information. I want you to know this. I do have some feelings about it, but I'm gonna tell you the informational part first. Right. That takes self-control. That takes self-awareness. That takes self-discipline. And, and, and I'll be honest with you. If you really want to learn how to effectively communicate, you have to check yourself to see if you really have discipline because you can't effectively communicate without discipline. I'll give you an example. Even the deaf community, they taught me this. They display discipline because they have to wait for the other person to finish signing. They have to watch with their eyes and watch their, their um, lip reading. They have to pay attention, they're watching. That takes self-discipline. Mm. And then they respond after the person that was speaking has finished. The, 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 the hearing community doesn't do that. So one of the things I want you to remember when you take this vlog and you, you read, you watch it, and then you go to your spouse, practice some self-discipline and allow yourself to pretend to be deaf for a minute. Pretend that you need to hold on to every word that that person has to say before you respond. Mm -hmm. Because see, I'm a classic interrupter. 
So I learned so much from the deaf community. When I did that deaf sensitivity training, I learned so much because I realized that, man, if I was deaf, I would, I would be jacked up because I would be signing before the person finished. And I don't know what they, and you can't do both because the other person's got to sign and stop then you sign and stop. Right. But if you talking and signing and they talking and signing, there's no, no. there's no synchronism, right? So why can't we get that right as hearing people? Right. You know, so I had to learn that. I had to learn. I became a better listener because I did that training. So I had to learn that. And Derek speaks very slowly. And um, he takes his time. Because what I say is profound. And as you can see, what I say is just as profound, but I speak fast. Yeah, and I'm just <laughs> waiting to say my point, because when I talk in a minute about okay. this right well, here. You don't have that much time. But no, you need to go ahead and finish the other, the other part of... Oh, yeah, um, okay. So, so I, okay, so what I covered was you have to have emotional intelligence about the internal processor or the external processor. You have to have self-discipline um, and wait for the person to finish what they're saying. Sometimes you have to also redirect that person to, okay, well, hold on. You just said it was informational. I feel like it's going too emotional now. Is that okay? So sometimes you may have to redirect so that the person can give you their information before they go to the, the emotional. And then of course the confirmation. So confirmation basically is in any relationship, just the ability to say, I heard you say, a, B, C, and D. Uh, like if I decide, to, I tell Derek, you know, I'm getting ready to leave the house. I'm going to go to get my manicure and my pedicure. Then I'm going to go to the grocery store. And then I'm going to stop at the post office. Derek will then give me confirmation communication by right. saying, I heard you say. Right. <laughs> you didn't even listen, see? See, this is the this is the communication issue. See, and this is classic because this happens in our house. So then, when I don't come home for two hours, he's calling me like, "Where you at?" I'm like, "Can you repeat what you said?" Derek, I told you, you where repeat? I was going. I apologize. I told you I was going <laughs> I to get know. a manicure, pedicure, <laughs> grocery store, post office, and this is the and that's why confirmation is so important. Because you'll become incredulous, like me, many, many days in my said. life. I just said it again. Am I supposed to respond to that? Confirmation? Are we giving them I, an I, example of confirmation? So we, obviously we have not perfected I heard, that much. I heard, I heard oh what you said, gosh. and, and I, I got it. I heard you saying that you're going. I heard you saying that you're going to the store. To the manicure, pedicure. <laughs> I didn't know you were using that as an example. That's why. I, I, I said that twice. Okay. Well, that, you know what? That's that's that's. But see, that's a let me tell you something. Live situation. But, and, and, and let me tell you, ladies, sisters, <laughs> my sisters, my wives, oh, Lord. my soon-to-be wives. This is why you gotta have this communication <laughs> thing right. Because let me tell you. One day, I asked Derek to go when he was at the store. I asked him to pick up dog food he picked up a dog leash see that's why you need confirmation well, part, part see, i the, said i asked for the leash the dog has the a leash here's where's the, the dog food he goes oh i thought you said dog food <laughs> right and so if he didn't give me confirmation if he had given me confirmation right. rather i would have said no baby not the dog leash dog food you know we all, our dog is always running out of food bless his little heart so look, look. Here's here's the thing. Uh, I don't know what seven years ago, about seven years ago, uh, realized that I had um, dyslexia. Dyslexia. Yes. Dyslexia. And we mm. didn't. It, when it, when we found that out, it made sense on how how our arguments were previous to that, because a lot of it had to do with how I interpret information and how I look at stuff, and it may be backwards. And it made a lot of sense moving forward. So now, because we know that, which goes back to Sonia, what she's saying about valuing uh, and the information and understanding, and knowing that helped our marriage, that was a big piece of our communication. Uh, so those kind of situations, we, we learn how to put some things in place. Sonia has to text me informational things. Text me. Send me a picture. Uh -huh. I'm, in this, I'm in Walmart the other day with a picture of, a fabric softener and uh -huh. I had the picture and I, I raised it up uh -huh. and I put it next to the fabric softener <laughs> I 
offset and I picked up the thing and I put it, the lady's looking at me. And like, that's a okay, shame because I've been soft? using that same and fabric softener at, for years. But I had to do that but, yeah, because the communication back in the past caused us to sleep on the couch, right. which is a whole nother conversation. Um, well, I really want to go into, will you finish that? Yeah, I think I was finished those three things. Okay. Okay. Because there, there's other factors. We get so many couples who, after the communication has been breached and there's, there's been hurt and arguments and fights and someone is sleeping on the couch and someone's in another room and they're not coming back, it's important to, to pause and be selfless. Figure out why that person is sleeping on the couch, which means that they want to be away from you. Hmm. Or, or they're so um, consumed with their emotions that, and they haven't figured out how to get it out. They don't know what to do with it. They, they stay away. They stay away. They don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. and, and it's important to know what to do. To how, how do you re-engage after that? How do you come back? And Which, can we talk, is always it, the first it's sentence to say. It's, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. Can we talk? Yeah, we can talk. And then you talk about your feelings and your needs. And you can look back at our other vlogs to get that information. We really don't have time to go into that again. But go back and look at those vlogs and talk, the one that talks about needs and talks about um, mm, intimacy needs. The intimacy needs. Um, um, your temperament. Yeah. And so you have to be able to re-engage. Um, so we, we talked, uh, we gave some good practical examples because this is something that was real when you were talking. I just zoned It's out. always real. We always have to communicate. Absolutely. So, so, um, those are tools, and, you, and it's only as good as what you use. Right. If you don't use your tools in your house, your house is going to fall apart, right? So if you don't use your tools in your marriage, your marriage is going to fall apart. Right. you got to use the tools, people. You have to. That's the only way it's going to work. You will not get through having a successful marriage without working it. you got to work it. If, so you if you're lazy, it. you should have stayed single. Oh. Yes, nice. I said that. Okay, what's with that? Incredible Hulk. Some of you guys are not old enough to remember the Hulk. Back in the day, it was a mild man named David Banner. And uh, I think that was his name. Yeah. And uh, he was some type of intelligent kind of guy, but kind of like, you know, to himself all the time. But then when he came into conflict, he used to go into a rage, which thus to turn the Hulk. He turned into this monster. And his, his saying was always, you won't you don't like me. Don't make me angry. Don't make me angry. You won't, you like, won't me like me when I'm right. angry. And so he turns into the, this is for the men, by the way. For the men. Now, women, you we have to. You could become hawks, too. Yeah, but you're hawkettes, but there's no hawkettes. <laughs> We're talking about the men. And so, and so the men, we turn into this. Hawkettes. We turn into this, you know, rage, mm -hmm. and then we don't know what to do with it, and then we kind of withdraw or we'll act it out and fight, and we'll just go crazy. Hmm. So a lot of men are like the hawk. You have emotions inside of you and you have this rage inside of you and you have not learned how to express your emotions. You have not learned how to deal with the pain in your past. And so the pain in your past turns into this and then it's destructive. Mm. And when it becomes destructive, not just destructive in the marriage, but if you have children, you'll have little baby hawks. And when you have a child who's acting out in school all of a sudden, well, it's in the DNA. They're seeing something. They're seeing parents being separated. They see one parent in another room and another parent in another. And we talked about that on the last vlog. But we, man, we have to figure out how not to be the hawk. We got to be Mr. Incredible. Mr. Incredible. Here's a guy in the last one, uh, Incredibles 2. I don't want to do a spoiler alert. This is a spoiler alert. So if you hadn't seen it, then stop it. <laughs> Whatever. You should have seen him by now if you got kids. Too bad. Shame on you. But anyway, <laughs> Mr. Incredible in number two, his wife, because, you know, they're saving the world, the whole family, saving the world. Mm -hmm. And his wife got this promotion, this job for her to save the world. Mm. And he was a little kind of upset about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what he did? Sounds familiar. He was upset about it. You know what he did? Mm -hmm. He had a conversation with his wife. Mm -hmm. Hey, babe, you know what? I'm a little feeling, a little feelings about this whole superhero thing. Why do you have to do it, not me? You know, mm -hmm. I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the man. Yeah, I'm, I'm Mr. Incredible. I'm Mr. Incredible. And she kind of just, you know, listened to what he was saying. And, and, and they had a good conversation. And he's locked the house down. He took care of Dash. Mm -hmm. He took care of 
Jack uh, Jack. Jack Jack and and what's the little girl Violet, Violet. Mm -hmm. and and he handled his business while she was handling the world. Mm -hmm. The main thing is that he was able for men. He was able to share how he felt to his wife. He didn't go into his corner. He didn't suck his thumb. Mm -hmm. And he had his boy Frozone, Frozone, Mr. Frozone. Yeah, Frozone. And they, you know, they he had vented to his boy. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so the whole family, they came back together and they all ended up saving the world. Team Incredible. That's hmm. what they did. And at some point, the impact that you have men in your communication, you have to find a way to emote and express your feelings and how you feel about things. Because it's unhealthy to withdraw, go into your man cave, uh, go into the dark place, go into the sunken place. Get your drink on, watch your little porn, get your little girlfriend on the side, and you think everything is good. And if you have little tiny Incredibles in your house, mm. they will grow up to be this dude right here, mm -hmm. as opposed to following who their father is. Mm. Communication is so important. So, good example, honey. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, right, you know. And then one day, you'll be... Uh, <laughs> you'll be... Mr. Mr. Incredible. You'll be the real man. Yeah. This is a, little, this is a baby man. Mm -hmm. When you, you get go, to this place, you from that you're talking about your feelings, <laughs> your emotions. <laughs> you know, you're not, you're looking at that, that old guy down there. I'm not going to be Mr. Hulk anymore. I'm going to be Mr. Incredible. Oh my gosh. Derek used to be Mr. Hulk, y'all. I was. He did. And then he went, where's the little Mr. Incredible? And then he went to this. I graduated to he that. Did. Baby, he did. But he, the first place. eight years of our marriage, he was Mr. Hulk. We have holes in our old house and in the walls <laughs> to, to prove it. And my Diana Reeves CD was broke because he turned into the Hulk. I mean, for real, for real. Then he got over that, you know, came to Jesus. I found my role as wife. And then he came this. And then I want to say the last eight years, maybe. It's eight years. He it's me right, right here. here. Boom. So bam. He can, he bye, y'all. <laughs> bye, y'all. He can say. <laughs> I need to talk about what you said, uh, that I felt disrespected, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. No, I like that. I like this, this Mr. Incredible. You like this guy? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because, you know, we need husbands. We need you to become mature in how you communicate with us. It helps us feel safe and secure so we can better help you. We are your help meet. And um, I found that I became more effective as a help meet mm -hmm. when he grew up. So thank you for growing up. <laughs> You better get them before Lil D comes and home. Come <laughs> okay, so. Why are my toys on the floor in the kitchen? Come <laughs> up. What? I'm giving him the lie? Mm -mm. Stop it. That's so disrespectful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we gave you a lot of information about communication. And we hope that it helped because, you know, communication is such a broad subject matter. But we try to hone in on the areas that we think most conflict comes from. So, you know, you've got to increase your emotional intelligence. Identify if you're an internal processor, an external processor. You still need self-discipline, just like the deaf community does. You need to slow down and communicate and wait and listen. You need to redirect. And then you need to give confirmation. So now that you know what, what you're going to do, do with it. it. Thank, Thank you. you for watching. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share these videos. Yes. We want people yes, to yes, see yes. and understand a lot about marriage. And so, I'm sorry. No, uh, just a lot about marriage and a lot about being married and what it looks like. And so share it with someone and subscribe. Okay? Please share. And until next time, take good care of yourselves. Bye. Bye-bye.